Thank you, Roger. I'd now like to call on John Minto to put the case for the next one. Inga mana, inga reo, inga hoi whā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tāke katoa. Um, I didn't see you on that Springbok tour march in 1991, uh, Roger, but uh, I was there in the year. Maybe you were in the... <laughs> 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 you know, dope vouchers sound so much like motherhood and apple pie. Don't they sound so wonderful? Don't they sound so natural? Don't they sound... So like the kind of thing that, that would be impossible to impose unless you were a, a lily-livered liberal who was determined to stop nanny state from interfering in the lives of families and students. Well, you know, when you look at vouchers, and when the facts come out, the gloss comes off vouchers faster than it comes off act party dietary advice courtesy of people like Donna Awateri Huata. <laughs> or, or act. Um, dancing lessons, courtesy of uh, Rodney Hyde. <laughs> the point that I want to come to is the, the, the critical, most important point, is that what vouchers do is they do not give additional choice to most parents. They give a marginal extra choice to some parents, but they give a choice to the schools as to who they accept attending them. When a person fronts up with a voucher to a school, the voucher is not a right to enrol at that school. The voucher is the opportunity to put your name in to see if the school will accept you. And what we know from New Zealand experience, whenever schools are given the choice of which students they take, they choose the whitest and the brightest. They pick students who are good at sport, they pick students who are good at music, students who will enhance the reputation of the school. So the focus becomes the reputation of the school rather than the provision of high quality education for everybody at the school. And let me give you an example from New Zealand. In the 1990s we had the National Party with its school choice policies. And uh, I'm going to talk about Avondale College which was run by Phil Raffles who was an associate of Roger Kerr on the, the Business Roundtables Education Subcommittee the Education Forum. So Phil Raffles was running Avondale College really hard with a school choice model. So what did that actually mean on the ground? What Avondale College did was they wrote to all of the intermediate schools across West Auckland and they got those schools to send a letter to all the top stream students in Form 2 at those schools and said, send your child to, to Avondale College. We, we've got a strong academic program. We will be the best school for your child. And so a decile two school attracted students from well outside its area, became a decile five school. What happened inside the school? Inside the school, the top stream classes were totally dominated by out of zone students. What happened down the bottom to the kids, the local Avondale kids who still attended the school? Well, a, a large proportion of them were pushed into what was called H block. And H block was referred to by the other students as the handicap block. And in this block, these students were prevented from sitting school certificate because they might pollute the school's exam results. The parents were up in arms about it. They called meetings. They had a meeting in the school staff room where they ordered the principal out of the meeting. They said, we don't want you here. We want to talk about our kids. One of those parents, um, spoke to me about her experience. She said she pleaded with the school to take her daughter out of H block and put her into the mainstream. The school said no, because she wasn't up to, up to school certificate. She transferred to another school, and she passed three school certificate subjects. Five years later, that mother rang me to say she was so proud her daughter had just graduated as, or just become a registered nurse. She'd done her three-year study, um, or four-year study post-school. She was buried under a market-driven voucher system, under a school choice system by Avondale College. And those stories are typical of the experiences that the local Avondale kids had. If there were two things I was going to pick up from what Roger said that I think are the most 
um, appalling. They are vouchers benefiting um, kids in poor communities. The evidence says absolutely otherwise. And the other point completely eludes me. Maybe <laughs> it, can't, it actually it was, it can't have been that important at all. <laughs> so what happens under vouchers to um, kids who are average or kids who've got special needs? Those kids get squeezed out. When schools have got a choice as to who they choose, they choose students who will enhance their reputation. Um, kids with special needs, kids with, um, of lower academic ability, they're the ones who get squeezed out. The voucher systems around the world have shown that those who benefit are middle class parents and parents who have the money to make the choices which um, Roger Kerr talks about. So if you take your voucher, if you're a brown skinned, if you're a Māori or Polynesian kid from, from South Auckland, you take your voucher to King's College and say, please enrol me at um, King's College, I want my, my, my boy to do really well. What will happen? There's no way that child's going to get in. There's a whole pile of barriers in the way for them getting that education that, that, that this child is supposed to aspire to. The, 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 um, the barriers are in terms of um, in terms of funding, for, for example. If you average out the amount of money which the government spends per head on um, secondary, in secondary education in New Zealand, it comes to about $6,500. So that's what your voucher is worth. So you go to, another, you go to a school in New Zealand, um, go to a private school, go to one of our high decile um, state schools, and they expect a big top up on top of that. They expect a lot more money from you than the value of your voucher, because a voucher in fact, is a deposit on an education. It is not fully funded for education. 